Hello everyone, this is Shokura Zohe Kyoku aka Chikomens and welcome back to our last play of Teachers with Love and Passion. In the last playthrough, we started off Ray Sprout of Fox, Mr. Fox Sprout. And uh, we actually have to redo almost everything again because this is a new version of the game and their save file doesn't go with it. So we're redoing everything again. And meeting Mr. Ray again. Very charming, very teasing, and very handsome. Mm hmm. <laughs> we ended off at the path where it was originally supposed to have two options, but we had three options indeed. And it has been a while, so I'm not sure if I remember which option we chose last time. Hopefully, Maybe it's just test and experience, experiment to see what the options are. Anyway, let's go. So we have this option. We have the classroom and of the hallway or the first floor. So I remember classroom is where we met Mr. Hansen or known as Lawrence. I tend to remember Mr. Hansen more though Ooh, because she doesn't call his first name often enough so usually others said his name as Lars and of the hallway I believe it was the cafeteria where we met um right right uh, Marcus Marcus can't remember his uh, last name though but yeah Marcus so I'm guessing the first floor is the good option uh, going upstairs sounds a bit stupid. If someone is there, they can easily corner me before I can reach the stairs. Uh, still, it is a good place to hide. I need to make sure no one is going to harm the kids in the morning. And thinking on the positive side, I may have forgotten my classroom door open and it is making all that noise. Hmm, I really hope it's just that. Coming to terms with myself, I take a deep breath, holding tight to my phone. Yeah, I think this is the new option. I'm scared, of course, but since there is no one around, I need to make sure this place is safe. Praying not to meet a bad end, I sign, walking towards the first floor. It's quiet, but surprisingly, the place isn't as scary as the ground floor. Also, that um, that kind of uh, flag saying about bad ends is uh, concerning. I will laugh if we actually get the bad end through this route, though. The many windows around help me see the path ahead, as well as the beautiful view of the night sky outside. My shoulders are stiff. Yet, I try my best to keep my eyes open to catch any strange movement in the shadows. Taking slow steps, carefully not to make a sound, I see something that forces me to stop halfway. From the corner of my eye, I see my classroom door open. Eh? So I did forget to lock it. And here I was, imagining the worst scenarios, eh? Laughing at my own careless memory, I lean over the wall. Leaving my worries aside, I take a look away from the dark walls and into the night sky. Thankfully, nothing dangerous happened, but it doesn't mean it wasn't scary. And yet, here I am, making sure bad things don't happen in my shift. Since when have I been putting my job over my fears? Ah. Uh, being surrounded by everyone has changed something inside me. I guess I have been braver since I realized that I am not alone anymore. Smiling at my own thoughts, I move away from the windows, walking towards the open classroom. As my feet draw near, I see a faint light shining in a dark corner. Curious, I take a peek inside. Wondering if a student forgot something in the desk. But instead of that, 
What I find standing there gets me frozen on the spot. Mr. Fox. What is he? Oh, wait. Of course. I forgot he usually stays at school after his work hours. So I wasn't alone after all. My ass moved back in his direction as I feel the heavy burden on my chest dissipating. Ooh, okay, okay, this is a good choice. Woo, hello there, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox is rocking his body softly, reading what appears to be a folder in his hand. I tilt my head, confused, noticing that he has one of my cabinets open. What? But, wait. What is he even doing in my classroom? Hmm, should I wait or call out to him though? Maybe we should call out to him. Why not? Hmm, Mr. Fox? He turns around, showing me his usual carefree face. He isn't surprised or embarrassed to be caught in a place he shouldn't be. Good evening, Miss Fine. I thought you weren't going to say hi. What? How do you know I was here? I saw you looking out the window just now. Oh. Unconsciously, I turned around, looking in the direction where I was standing a few moments ago. In fact, he could easily see me from his position here. Embarrassed for being caught red-handed when I was trying to catch him, I turned my gaze at the floor. His muffled laughter says he is not mad at me, and it also stirs something in my stomach. It is not common to see you here at this hour. Ah, uh, yes. I, I have some work to do before leaving. It was supposed to be quick, but it didn't go as I had planned. As everything around us go. Yeah. Even when talking to me, Mr. Fox doesn't let go of that white folder. He doesn't even stop reading to look at my face properly. Swallowing up my embarrassment, I look for the best way to approach the situation and not sound too suspicious of him. Um, I'm not sure if my eyes are playing tricks on me or something, but I feel like Mr. Fox have like heterochromia, like the dual color eyes, like one eye is golden and one eye is more red or orange. But maybe it's just a trick of light on my eye. Um, Mr. Fox, what are you doing in my classroom? Hmm. He pauses for a moment. Then he casts his eyes in my direction. Seeing it glowed in the dark reminds me of a wild animal hiding in the shadows. And as a bray cornered around dinner time, I instinctively hold back my breath. What do you think I am doing? His tone is playful, like an evil jester playing around in a horror tale. Something tells me he is trying to scare me on purpose just to see my reaction. Uh, I don't know. Looking for something without my approval? Oh, how cool of you, Miss Fine. I didn't know you were like this. I know how to play back pop when I need to. Hmm. But I am no criminal, Miss. You have to prove that first. Excited to hear my last words, Fox puts his photo down and walks closer to me. Oh, is that how you want to play? Uh, well, I wasn't doing anything weird. Just wondering if you kept the cabinet's keys around here. That's bolder, that bold part of the words looks kinda weird over there. The keys are in my locker. I see. Why were you needed? Hmm. And how the hell did you get in here? I was confused before, but 
but now I'm sure I locked this classroom before leaving. You did, but I got your key in the office. Again, without my approval and knowledge. Oh, but I did it thinking on your behalf. Hmm. I didn't want to disturb you with such a trivial thing, so I decided to do it on my own. Hmm. You don't seem to believe me. Do I look suspicious to you? Yes, you are right now, sir. Especially with that wicked smile on your face. No, but the situation is. I see. So this means you have no reason to accuse me of guilty. I did not realize how close he was until he leaned over, closing the distance between our faces. Oh wow, hello there sir. Okay, maybe it was a trick of my eye and uh, his eyes are a normal color and not like dual color eyes. <laughs> Still pretty either way. Blood froze on my cheeks, and I almost bit my tongue when I noticed that I was talking to him with no restriction the whole time. Instantly, I pulled my body away, but then I stopped. If I back down now, I won't have answers, and Mr. Fox is going to win this discussion. As of reading my thoughts, Ray's mask, finding the situation way too amusing. Shaking my head, I leaned back doing my best to keep a serious face and stare at him. Your presence here is enough reason. So is yours. A good girl like you shouldn't be wandering in the hallways when she is supposed to be working. I heard a noise. Hmm? Hearing my reason, he tilts his head. Letting a lock of his golden hair hang in front of his eyes. I think he was I think he is waiting for me to elaborate, but I don't. Actually, I can't say anything beyond it when his face keeps getting closer, making me anticipate more. Oh my. Looking at him now, I notice that all this time I have been drawn by his conversation that I didn't notice how handsome he really is. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, god. <laughs> the priorities though, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> charm indeed, he is very charming, but wow. Now you notice he is handsome? Oh my. <laughs> Excuse me, I mean he is handsome, but hmm. Her priorities though. And I don't think this is the best time to realize it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try to avert my gaze, but he follows me, caught me in the cutting, catching. I, 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 is it like caught or catching? But uh, I'm going to continue reading like that either way. Caught me in the sweet scent coming from his body. Oh, 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 wow. Wow, you, you smelt that scent, huh, girl? Wow. It is starting to annoy me how hard it is to run from his charms. I mean, he is plenty charming. And teasing. Your airy face is so cute. That makes me want to buzz you out more. Um, don't do that, sir. I don't think it's great to tease people like that. We are so close, it is hard to think about anything else but him. My body is stiff, waiting for him to touch me, but he doesn't do it. He only stares at my face, enjoying the moment. Oh my, why Why do you wait for him to touch you though? Ooh. <laughs> oh my God. Mr. Fox, enough already. Just tell me, what are you doing? But it is no fun. I like this cat versus rat game of ours better. Eh. And I'm loving this new side of yours. Eh. Alright, fine. I was looking for some 
all anatomy studies to read tonight. And when I asked Thomas about it, he told me you had it around here. What? Yeah, grading is my crime. Ah. Uh, taking a long breath, he takes a step back. Dang, he, he just wants to tease her, huh? Crossing his arms, he looks around the room as I try to put the pieces together. It was obvious from the start, and still, I was expecting to hear something else. Slowly, my heart eases a space, allowing me to laugh at this stupid situation. See, the truth is no fun. I like it better when we are pretending. Oh my god. Mr. Fox, why are you always like this? <laughs> Sorry. He says that, but it is clear. But it is clear on his face that he doesn't feel that way at all. And honestly, his stupid jokes make my night way more exciting than I could ever do. Um, it's not. I well, I mean that. Uh, that's good if you like a stupid jokes, though. I I don't think I like that heart pounding kind of jokes, girl. I know I should have asked you instead of barging in, but I really didn't want to disturb you with such an unimportant matter. And I was hoping the keys would be around here too. I see. Well, in that case, would you like me to get it to you? Isn't it too much trouble? You said you are working. No, I actually need to go back to the lounge, so... Two birds with one stone. <laughs> then I would like that. Alright, let's go to my locker. With all the misunderstandings solved, I go back to the teacher's lounge, followed quietly by him. Walking inside the room, I quickly make my way through all the lockers until I reach mine in the corner. As I'm looking through my stuff, I notice the footsteps stop following me. I look back, finding that Mr. Fox decided to wait at the door. It reminds me of that talk we had the other day about the distance between him and the teachers. I silently watch his eyes dart back and forth from one spot to another, as if this is the first time in a long time he has seen this place. It's just us here, you know. Yeah. So, you don't need to be so cautious. Come in. Hmm. Do you really want me to be here? Uh, I do. Hmm. You know, your bad cop side is interesting. But I think I like your nice girl side better. Oh my, ooh. Ah, uh, messing up with my feeling and saying nothing more, Mr. Fox takes a step inside. Trying not to let him take control of my thoughts, I turn my attention back to the locker in front of me as I hear his slow footsteps approaching. I look through every folder and small box until I finally find it behind all my books. Tired, I stretch my arm, trying my best to reach it without taking anything out. That's when I see, over my shoulder, the doctor standing behind me. Just like before, he is watching me closely. However, this time, his eyes are concerned about what I am doing. It's a funny feeling to feel my face getting red even though he didn't say anything. Oh my. Suddenly, the computer makes a noise calling all attention. Huh? Oh gosh, this again. What is wrong? Ah, uh, this thing. I'm not sure if the problem is with the computer or the printer, but neither is working. Have you restarted it? Yes, it didn't work. Then there is only one option left for you. What? This. Uh, 
three ticks a step closer, and suddenly he smacks the computer loudly. My eyes widened at the sound, forcing me to hold my breath. I expected anything but this. He takes a step back, and two seconds later, the machine starts to print all the requests I have made in the past two hours. What the heck? How? I mean, sometimes it works when you smack it really, really strongly. So um, th that works. But also at the same time, it could break the thing. So this time it was lucky that it worked. <laughs> Uh, no way. I know. I learned this trick from a teacher that used to work here. Thomas hasn't fixed this thing in ages. Wow. But don't be so surprised. Soon you'll see that a lot of stuff around here only works when you hit the right button. You mean hit it, not the right button. Now, did you get that key? Oh, right, it's here. Pulling my arm out of the locker, I swing the key between my fingers. Quickly, he holds out his hand to catch it before I let it go. All right. Taking a few steps back, he flashes me a satisfied smile. I think of asking him more about a folder from earlier, however. The words die in my mouth when I realize he is already walking out of the lounge. He doesn't say anything, not even a thank you for the time we wasted. Uh, you're welcome, I guess. I won't deny that it made me feel a little disappointed to see him go so coldly. For a moment, it felt like he only needed me where I had used for him. Trying not to get too much attention to it, I turned back to the computer. Okay, so now I can work. I'll set this cockerman here and probably print this one too. Uh, since I'm here, I'll make sure to bring these old projects for the kids next week. Hmm, I actually have a lot to do. Hmm? Hey, I got the ducks. Uh, seeing him back so fast sure make me bite my tongue and regret thinking badly of him. He showed me the same sweet smile while I was trying hard not to be ashamed of my thoughts. Here is your key. Thank you. Ah. Oh, you you welcome. So, are you going to stay here for longer? Hmm. Yeah, it seems so. Mind if I stay around to read a bit? Uh, are you sure you want to be here? Hmm. Well, I was planning to read it quietly in my office like always, but... I only do that because there is no one here. Oh. But since you are here... I don't want to miss my chance to spend some time with you. Ooh! <laughs> uh. Unless you don't want it, then I will leave you alone. No! Uh. I mean, please, I would love to have your company. Thank you. Aww, ooh! <laughs> My heart skirts a beat as I see his genuine smile draw closer to me once more. I'm used to being alone in my own space, but having someone around hits differently. Maybe it is the same for him? Sitting on a small couch, Fox crosses his legs, opening a folder filled with old documents. I didn't know you'd like to read old stuff like this. It is a hobby of mine. Studying. Learning. I look at him, speech class to hear something I'm used to saying all the time. Suddenly, I feel at home with someone that may be able to understand me. I think we have more in common than I expected, Mr. Fox. I think so too. 
Oh, the computer slide hit his face, showing me a different glow above his eyes. Okay, let me take a look at this beautiful CG. Very nice, very cozy. And uh, both of them have really eyes. I really like the glowed glow of those eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel a red light shining on my face too. And I just not shyly. Pulling my chair, I turn my attention back to the computer screen. We don't say much after this, but being together feels enough. Maybe staying overtime doesn't sound so bad anymore, especially with a handsome man. So we have skipped through the uh, sport festival process of the teachers fighting against each other in the sport festival. Uh, Hannah's team consists of Mr. Hanson and Edgar, and uh, the other rest is um, on the other team. So we uh, kind of have a strained uh, sprain ankle uh, and was brought to the clinic. And so um, Mr. Hanson was kind to stay with us and uh, meeting more with Ray. Yay! Anyway. All right, let's take a look at you. Too close. Tell me where it hurts, Miss Fine. Uh, my ankle and now my leg too. Okay, I'll examine it now. Please endure it a bit. Okay. Mr. Fox loves my jeans to my knees, making sure to not show more skin than necessary. He gently holds my calf and squeezes it hard enough to make me avert my eyes. This is just a normal checkup. However, my heart doesn't seem to understand it. He rubs my skin, slowly going down to the swollen spot. At this moment, all the embarrassment vanishes from my face. His gentle touch on the surface is enough to send a painful current running up my leg making me wrap the sheets on my nails, biting my lips to hold back a scream. Oh, does it hurt when I touch here? A bit. How about here? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Wait, what sound did make? This one that we know. I am, excuse me. Hmm. Making such cute sounds. Please don't look at me like that. Right. Yeah, I get it. I'm choking. Just give me a second. Smiling, he starts teasing me and starts to seriously examine my ankle. Although the pain makes it hard for me to pay attention to anything. I still see how Ray's face is seriously staring at me. It was the same when I brought a kid here. He always looks crazy and playful, but he doesn't let it get in the way of his work. Once he is done, he takes a step back, showing me his usual smile. Hmm. Be happy, Miss Pine. It's nothing serious, just a painful twist. A few days in bed will be enough to heal you. Thank God. It's all good, but you are out of the sports events for the rest of the day. Ah, Don't show me that face. I'm doing it for your own good. I'm going to bandage your ankle and re you some meds. Okay. If the pain persists from tomorrow on, then go to the hospital for a full checkup. Yes, sir. That's my good girl. Oh, <laughs> she is often called a good girl. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm 
sorry, I shouldn't be laughing so much, but it's funny. Bat in my head. Ray walks back to his desk. It is strange, but I don't hate it when he treats me like a kid. Somehow it feels good. Ooh. Then I should I, then should I send you home for the day? What? No, I want to go back. Didn't you hear what he said? I did, but I still want to watch it. Hmm. <laughs> And I want to know if we won the relay. I don't see a problem with watching Formula Four. Thanks. As long as you don't put your foot on the floor on your way there. Oh, now that's a problem. If I don't find a solution, I'm sure I'm going to stay in this bed for the rest of the day. I quickly look at Mr. Hanson. His angry expression already knows what I'm about to say. Mr. Hanson, will you carry me? Stop it! I had to try it, but I guess it's my responsibility to take you back. Eh? Hmm. What the hell happened to you, Hanson? Shut up and get out of my way! Oh, he's embarrassed. What? No way in hell I'm letting you carry her there. I won't carry her. I'll just give her body support. That's even worse for her ankle. Hmm. Then I'll carry her. Eh? With that bag of yours? Forget it. How about her? Um. Uh, th there's something. The wheel. The the um the chair, the chair that for uh, people who can't walk and stuff. I couldn't remember the name of it right now. Whoops. But that chair. You know nothing. I know you are an old man like me. I mean, I mean, that's the truth, I guess. It it would be very handsome to be able to carry her, but um, yeah. You you might pull out your back, sir. <laughs> Being stubborn will only give you back pain. Hmm. Uh, guys, please. Then what am I supposed to do? Let me help you take her there. Hmm. This doesn't mean I agree with you. I just want to finish this for once. As long as you stop being a pain, I don't really care about your reasons. Crossing his arms, Mr. Hanson leans on the wall while Ray turns to get the bandage. So, Miss Fine, how does it feel to have two old men fighting over you? Oh my God, no! What are you saying? Ray, please shut up. This situation is a bit awkward, but I'm happy to have it solved in the end. Now I just need to endure the embarrassment of having the two men carrying me around the school. Oh my! Oh my, indeed. Hello there, Ray Fox Row! Yay! Noted. So the general gist of the sport events is still the same. So uh, Bray and Mr. Hanson carry Hannah to the um, the competition, the sport competition, but found everything is in chaos, and then carry her back to the office <laughs> for a coffee. That was so funny. But I also skipped through it. And we here to the race route, in which I'm going to pause here for now. And we continue on in the next playthrough of the game. And that should be the pause for our playthrough of Teachers with Love and Passion. This time we explore the uh, halls of the school at night in the place where we worked overtime. 
when there's the bump in the night and scared but stay brave, Hannah strides forward to the first floor in which we found Mr. Ray Fox reading a document. He was actually quite suspicious and he, his words make things very sus among us. In which he just likes to tease people. <laughs> Making things uh, exciting, I guess. It's not good for my heart, but uh, but Hannah seems to like it. So maybe it, he is just her taste. <laughs> also, they share some common uh, liking in learning. So that's nice. Morning! We also finished the uh, sport festival in which I believe the uh, events happened exactly the same as the... Uh, other rounds, but uh, it was still exciting to read through uh, Mr. Ray's folks' uh, dialogue and his flirting, teasing, and also suicide too. Also, the uh, his antics and interactions with Mr. Hansen is also very cute. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that should be it for playthrough. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next playthrough of Teachers with Love and Passion. Bye-bye!